If you were going to invest your money into a brand new sports side by side, what would be the first thing you would want to do with it? Oh man, I, I'd have to say jump it, air, air it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't even, we didn't even like plan on doing that same shit at the same time. Oh man, that just happened. All right. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Brian. And I'm Tyler. And you're here with Fishers Off-Road, and today we're going to talk to you about jumping it. I mean, airing it out. You know, we've uh, looked on the internet and we found a bunch of videos of uh, do's and don'ts, you know, some things that you should look for whenever you want to air out your side-by-side. When to send it and when not to send it. And if you're going to send it, how much throttle are you going to use? You know what I mean? Throttle, throttle is the key. Throttle is the key, guys. I'm telling you, I see people get themselves into trouble with throttle, and I see people get themselves out of trouble with mm-hmm. throttle, but used in the wrong way, it's, you can get messed up. You could definitely get messed up. So we found a couple videos on the internet. Uh, we're going to be going over them and uh, our thoughts about them, uh, some of the stuff that we have. Our first video is taking place in the dunes, mm-hmm. and uh, we're actually going to be putting it up on the screen here. It has a nice little slow-mo shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Two razors? It's two razors. You got a four-seater and you got a two-seater. And you'll notice a lot of people when they go to jump their side-by-side, uh, especially the, the two-seaters, it's such a short wheelbase. And what happens is when they go to jump it, that rear end sinks down. And then just as they're reaching the top of that jump, that rear end is springing. Yeah. Like, it is full spring. It's going to throw that ass Right in a circle, I it's, guess, as it said. You're going endo. Mm-hmm. And, and there's there's that point when you get to, um, like, you know, you watch this video right here. These guys, you know, the four-seater, he's got his dialed in. See how the rear end's low and the front end's a little bit higher? Now the other guy next to him in the two-seater, right about here, he's shitting his pants. It is. It's over. <laughs> so, so, and another thing that I want to notice and is uh, if you notice the way he came off of this jump uh-huh. is – it's kind of you see how he's kind of cattywampus there. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a little bit off kilt, and a, and a lot of that has to do with picking your line whenever yep. you come off of your jump. So I mean, the other guy straight yep, on, straight flat, s- yep, flat. This mm-hmm. guy hit something sideways, yeah, and just got a little, little out of control there. You notice all that weight, all that weight is getting landed right on that passenger front tire. Oh, watch that whole front suspension fold. It just it definitely crumbles. There's a lot going on in this video, and it could have been avoided if maybe he followed the same line that the other guy did. Yeah. If he didn't hit it quite as hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's definitely a lot that goes on. I mean, it could have been the way he had everything set up. I mean, the four-seater is a little bit longer. Yep, yep. Yep, and and the guy with the four seater looked like his hat his he had his setup a little bit different. I mean, sometimes guys will weight them in the rear so that when they jump, they keep the rear down and the nose up. You know, they don't see how that rear's hanging down on that. It actually, I mean, are they both running? Yeah, they're both running paddle tires. Yeah, they so, are both running paddle tires for in the dunes. And the thing about this right here is to watch this accident happen. It doesn't look that vicious, vicious. But I'm going to tell you something. If they have three point harnesses or mm-hmm. three point seat belts instead of four point or five point mm-hmm. harnesses, they're going to pay the price. Bye bye collarbone. It's that going. thing's out. It's done. That thing's out. One thing I do want to point out before we go into any more videos, if you guys look. Uh, it looks like both of these guys are actually wearing helmets, mm-hmm. uh, is what it looks like. And that's because they're full on sending it. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to do that kind of stuff, wear a helmet. I yep. mean, there's times when, you know, if you're just casual cruising and it's not that big of a deal, super flat, running down to the mailbox, whatever, you know, I'm not saying you need to need to wear a helmet 24 seven when you're in your unit. There's times that you know that you're going to be riding, especially if you're riding with the, the group, you know, the gang, the boys, the girls, whatever, and you're out there just getting it, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's time to strap up. And it definitely. Helmet. And I, again, I can't a hundred percent tell in this video, but man, mm-hmm. yeah, we've seen so many videos of people not wearing helmets and actually our next video here and this next video this guy does not have a helmet he's got the steering wheel fully grabbed thumbs tucked inside arms fully extended yep i'm actually going to back this up and pause this right here yep and if you can see his elbows are completely locked in at this point yep and the thing about uh the, the machine that you pick uh, depending on the suspension is going to really depend when you do something stupid like this uh, you run out of talent you do something uh, because the rear end sprung on this when he got to the top and it launched him up over in an endo but he's driving an x3 so he's got the suspension to make mm-hmm. up for the lack in driver knowledge and 
and there is one thing that you can do whenever you get yourself in a situation like this. If you notice that, like the way he landed, if if he was in four wheel drive, which mm-hmm. whenever I jump, I try to put it in four wheel drive mm-hmm. to get more, just get that ass going. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. If whenever he came up out of that, if he if he was in four wheel drive and he gunned it, whenever his mm-hmm. front tires landed, it would actually pull him forward and leveled him out. Yeah, and yeah. he wouldn't have uh, had that crazy amount of buck going on there but he got lucky his front end didn't dig in and send him right on top of his lid yeah and that's another thing too when you're jumping like that it depends two wheel drive four wheel drive it depends if you stay into the throttle or mm-hmm. hit the brake because your machine is going to do just like if you've seen like pro motocross riders mm-hmm. they're jumping you know a nose up they're giving it gas a nose down they're breaking mm-hmm. you know so that's the same way in a side by side uh depending on how much throttle you give it is really going to depend on what that machine does and if you panic and hit the brake mm-hmm. and midair you know it's you're gonna, gonna cause it to you're gonna nose down yeah. and, and i've actually had that happen myself uh years ago i was in uh washington doing an intro with yamaha and i was on a um a raptor and we were we were doing some jumping and i i love hearing about his wrecks he doesn't talk well, about his wrecks too i didn't much. wreck i didn't wreck because i but what I did was when I came up over the one jump and I didn't scout the track before we went. Mm-hmm. So I was following somebody and just in the dust, you know how it is. You know, oh, yeah. lose track of things. Well, I came up over and I thought it was like a tabletop, but it really wasn't. I came up over and it was like, a, it was like a double. It was like shit's <laughs> gone. So I'm like, damn. And I, I, I didn't like use my head. I kind of panicked and left off the gas. As soon as I did, that front end started dropping. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just was like nose down. And once you hit that point, yep. there's no coming back. Yep. And I, I hit the gas quick, but I was already to that point to where it was too far. Mm-hmm. And and I landed and I hit the front tires. I didn't go over the bars. Uh, fortunately, it was a Raptor. It had the suspension. It could handle it. If yeah. it would have been like, um, say, a a banshee or a warrior back yeah. in the days i'd have been <laughs> out of luck yeah i'd have been over the bar and that's you know whenever you there's that nobody's ever going to have it whenever you're actually in the air it always feels like more time in the air than what you actually are oh yeah like, yeah it feels like you're up there you know hang time yeah and you're really not it's a couple seconds i mean milliseconds maybe but for you to let off the gas or like let's say if you're on an atv whenever you're in the air you let off the gas the front end starts to dive down you don't have enough hang time to throw your weight back, give it gas, and try and get that front end back up. Mm-hmm. Once you're already committed to going a certain direction, it's gonna the bike is just gonna be like water. It's gonna flow. And you're talking about a difference when you see these guys do it on motocross. I mean, they're tail whipping, and, and their bike doesn't weigh that much. It does. I, I mean, yeah. that's right. You're on an ATV, which is 600 pounds minimum mm-hmm. usually, most of the time. Yeah. So, I mean, it takes a lot of energy to change 600 pounds of direction when it's already going in that yeah. in that direction. And, so, but talking about side by sides, you don't have no. You can't use your body English or body no. weight to change the direction that your side by side is no. going to go. Like I said, it's going to be, it's just going to flow. Whichever direction that thing is decided to go is where it's going to go. Exactly. Another mistake that I see people making is they get out there and, you know, they've heard the term rubbing is racing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now on a side by side, that is not That's a big what no-no. you do. I know of people that have gotten hurt bad yeah. off of rubbing, like they'll touch tires and they think it's funny. Yeah. But, you know, you can check out this video right here and see what I'm talking about. You know, we got a couple RS1s, it looks like, and, uh, you know, they're out there and they're just having a big old time and they touch tires and that's it. Game over. Yeah. I mean, it just the whole bolts. front end just completely blows apart in a million pieces. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, again, this one's in slow motion, so it's kind of cool to watch it all happen. But mm-hmm. even the other guy, you can see the sand getting thrown up because he broke, uh, his front end too. And, uh, the other guy just caught the worst end of it. That's all. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you don't think that something like that's going to happen just by rubbing a little bit of tire, but I'm telling you right now, that is one of the most dangerous things when you see two guys out there just drag racing mm-hmm. or just running a little bit and playing, Yeah, man, as soon as you touch, something's going to give Yeah, and somebody's not going to make out real well, or both aren't going to make yeah. out real well. And the thing is, is, you know, at high speed, high speed is, mm. You know, um, I can't remember who the quote came from, but it's a term that I like, I have stuck in my head. It's a quote that is just, it's like every day I hear it, speed doesn't kill you. It's the initial stop after the speed. <laughs> you know, a lot can go yeah. wrong at high speed. And, you know, it's just stuff like this that you don't even think about. Uh, you know, if you bump tires at five miles an hour, nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But if you bump tires doing 60 mile an hour through the dunes, 
I mean, shit's going to fly apart. Oh, yeah. Even even 20, 30 mile an hour. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about two knobby tires. Mm-hmm. They're not going to give. Yeah. It's not smooth tires. Uh, rubber to rubber. Something's going to yeah. definitely get cattywampus, and it's going to be an ugly day for somebody. Yeah, it definitely is. We'll move on to our next video here. We got... Uh... So this next one here, we're still, you know, we're kind of talking about the whole jumping thing. Uh, if you'll notice, as soon as... Oh, that's a good one. This person goes to do the jump, you know... The rear end, it just springs right up and does, shoots wow, them out that, over. That's actually that's this is the best example for a video that we have. Look at that front, Boom. the back end. I mean, yep. that bed is all but touching yep. the rear tires. And as soon as he comes off, the front end doesn't compress. No, the front end doesn't nope. compress like the nope. rear end does. The front end's already looking for the lift, and then the back end's just kind of following suit. And if you look, it really doesn't look like he was even going that fast. It's just n- not every side by side is designed to jump. No, and, it's not. And if you don't have it set up to do that, you have no business jumping them. Because it's very true. You can get in trouble quick. It, it is very true. And you know, if you are going to jump your side by side, and it is a side by side that you that can be jumped, mm-hmm. um, they're set up for that. You know yeah. what I mean? You're not going to take a Honda Pioneer and go out and full on send it. Because I mean, I do. I know people do it. No, but we got videos of that too. Well, I'm it's saying a yard sale. Everything, and that thing lands. Everything about that. It's not designed. One, the whole. The, the ergonomics of everything is mm-hmm. not designed to be sent and put through that much shock no. on everything because no. shit's going to start breaking. It is, absolutely. It's not designed to roll over back on top on, uh, mm-hmm. on its wheels. You know what I mean? You see a lot of sports side-by-sides, whatever they hit, if they hit on their nose, what will happen is they actually roll back over on their tires. Like this video right mm-hmm. here, this guy actually rolled over. Mm-hmm. You know, you lay, if you jump a Defender HD10, that thing has more of a box body and mm-hmm. it's going to land and it's going to stay wherever You're it, stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just crazy how that is and uh here's another video we're gonna check this one out uh this fella here same example uh see it's a yard sale no helmets uh crap flying everywhere oh did he grab his head uh yeah i believe he did grab his head so Um, look at the uh, he's in the air this is one thing you don't want to do and you can even slow-mo this let me just see here okay yep yep. see his hands out the window yep hands out the door out the side boom right there if we can oh he tucked it in right there right before he landed but he was trying to grab the steering wheel i I, know he's grabbing his head no i think he was trying to grab his hat and cooler and everything else that's flying out (laughs) beer cans and everything else that's flying out but if you could see him he's actually grabbing his head and that's because he's not wearing a helmet which which you don't realize is how short those cages actually are and and i he he looks like he's just got the three-point seat belt on exactly uh you know when and and there's his hat you know some uh, like when that happens uh that's a yard sale yeah a when, total yard when sale. stuff's flying everywhere yeah and it's amazing how fast and how quick and how much damage you can do just by that little bit of an impact it's very true i've been you know in a lot of i don't want to say a lot but i've wrecked a lot of shit you know what i'm saying oh, I know you, know, that. you know that i know um and i i wrecked one time not wearing a helmet i didn't have a helmet on and i didn't think i was gonna wreck mm-hmm. i didn't well, you wasn't do I, you know you always think you got it but I, if i was doing something like this mm-hmm. and i was full-on jumping like and i knew for a fact that this could end mm-hmm. like badly i'm gonna wear a helmet i'm gonna get my harness the whole nine yeah and uh i was just driving around the property and i came around a corner i wasn't even really going fast and i rolled it over and uh i hit my head off of the um the mm-hmm. cage mm-hmm. and nothing i mean like i said i was probably doing you know 10 mile an hour or something like that 10 mm-hmm. 15 and i will always wear my helmet it doesn't matter if i go down and get the mail you know yeah. what i mean i am always going to wear my helmet because you never you can never account for whenever you're actually going to need it it's good yeah if you have it but whenever you don't wear it you know what's the point <laughs> so you want to do dumbass stuff you're going to pay the price well, i'm just saying what you don't realize is how short that cage actually is and especially if you get an aftermarket cage where it's even yeah. lower yeah and then you're not wearing a helmet in there. Your body does a lot of, whenever you're rolling or shifting back and forth, your body does a lot of stuff, uh, and it's just moving around. And your yep. head's hitting everything. Your arms are hitting everything. Yep. It's just, it's a lot going on exactly. in a short amount of time. And then you'll see in this video here, uh, the faster you go, uh, the quicker things happen, and the further you fly, and the more you roll and tumble. <laughs> uh, so, you know, something like that, uh, it's, it's very... Um, it's it'll shock you it'll put you to the point where you're scared to get back in your side by side i was at a dealer not too long ago and the whole front end of this razor was folded i remember that they were like yep just bought it there's 15 miles on it and he don't want nothing to do with it scared him to death he jumped it and he landed on his nose folded the whole front suspension Mm -hmm. yeah and scared him so bad that he didn't even want to get he didn't even get back in it to drive it back to the truck i'll have to look i think i have the picture of that yeah i think i have it in my phone yeah it's it's 
it'll definitely it shocks you i mean reckon's never fun he took it to the dealer dropped it off and said i don't care what you do with it sell it whatever but i am not gonna get back in it yeah. he said just do whatever you want so. either that or else he didn't want to spend the money to fix it either <laughs> well and i think it just scared him so bad he wasn't he wasn't gonna spend the money to fix it he was like here it is man yeah i'm done i'm out i'm yeah. done and every you know these guys that got them set up right make it look easy but if you don't have it set up right uh things can go wrong quick like this one right here you know he came off in an off camber uh way you know it wasn't like a flat takeoff you can see how it pitches to mm -hmm. the right and all that has to do with the takeoff you've got to look to see when you're jumping or whatever you're doing something like this man you got to make sure you have a good takeoff point because that has everything to do with how you're going to land it does and i want to point out the fact that you know most of these jumps that are being filmed and people are actually wrecking mm -hmm. you see how that it's jumping your unit is not something you do cruising down the trail at 30 mile an hour mm -hmm. you don't look for a jump mm -hmm. whenever you are actually planning on jump i know it sounds stupid but get out observe mm -hmm. where one where you're going to land you always you have to have a landing spot and mm -hmm. two what does the takeoff look like i mean we were riding in uh where was it blue holler mm -hmm. and they have that saba the the track oh yeah that yeah. thing is set up that that jump is specifically designed yeah to jump side by sides mm -hmm. on it is a smooth takeoff with a sailing point there's no crazy lip on it so it doesn't compress your suspension you just mm -hmm. jump it and it's i mean i was jumping it there with the maverick sport with yeah. mud tires you yeah. know what i mean yeah and, and it was landing nice it was it, landing good super smooth because it, it's set up for that but if you're just out cruising and you find something you think it'd be cool to jump make sure that it's not an off-camera mm -hmm. thing make sure you're going to come off level it be i mean just observe everything you're going to well, do a before lot of you times jump. a lot of times when you're out there on a the trail they aren't designed to jump no you know especially in dunes yeah because it swirls and it's going to change every hour mm -hmm. so you don't know what it's like yeah so to be able to go and hit that and be like oh yeah dude i'm gonna just air it out and i'm gonna send it you know next thing you know your stuff's all busted up oh, our next our next video here this fella here um you know good night yep knocked <laughs> see ya he's out oh man somebody get the salts out look at him yeah he's... and he, that whole front end of that thing is gone trash it's over yeah and and the dude knocked himself out yeah you know he jumped it and, and that, now that's a thing you know on that takeoff is it straight up in the air because if, if it's straight up in the air and it's not set up for you to sail straight out and you're going straight up in the air like this fella here yeah i mean done and you don't realize how fast you're going whenever you're coming down if you jump straight up in the air and you land on all four of your tires like this guy did yeah didn't even continue to go forward and look at it he's like where the hell am i right now <laughs> he's like what? what is going on right now again not wearing a helmet helmet yeah. is crucial guys yeah. this is like you absolutely need to be wearing a helmet and if you notice i'm going to slow it down here but if you notice whenever he's actually getting ready to land watch how tense he gets this yeah. is a great shot of how tense you can actually get look at him he is locked up here and he locked the arms brakes up and everything lock the brakes up arms are stuck straight out and then whenever he lands his whole body snaps forward and that's what we're talking about there's so much that goes on during a wreck while it's happening and you don't realize that you're getting jarred around as much as you are and mm -hmm. i mean this is how stuff gets broken not yep. just your unit but yourself and the <laughs> unit can be replaced yeah you can't replace your anything on your body though. yeah yeah plastic arms legs your pride yeah it all goes out <laughs> the window because <laughs> you know everybody films everything nowadays you're going to be all over the, you're going to go viral they do and not in a good way very true not for something cool <laughs> you're going to go viral because everybody's going to be like damn bro oh we saved the best for last so okay so this would be me jumping coming up here and the next one would be tyler so this is me won't you yep. know that's how i very would nice it. and smooth i would check things out you know i'd make a couple passes here I'd i am see how right on is. the throttle straight and, pinned now here comes tyler like just not even thinking about anything boom you know yep and that's the difference between people that have been around for a while <laughs> and well, one i probably busted up if that was me i probably would have took the same line that you did that guy took his own he line. did he did take his own he line. took his own line and a lot hotter and a lot hotter but it was not a good line but, but even there again that's that long ass four seat stretch limo yeah that that well it still got up there and went and if you look you know technically you it mm -hmm. still sprung a little bit 
Like yeah. not much, but mm-hmm. it's just an, just enough that like yep, if yep. he if you would have hit that faster, yep, he yep. would have hit that faster. It would have would have not been so smooth. But this guy, this asshole right here. Yeah. See the uh, the first this dude guy, is he's season. already on it, coming out of the back end. <laughs> he, he's starting out in Utah and he's about to hit yeah. a jump in Idaho. Yeah. Like he is like he is like going. Yeah. And you know the camera always shakes at the end. Like, yeah. Holy oh shit! shit you're wrecked. all right. <laughs> yeah. But and, you just you never know what's gonna happen, man, out there in the middle of nowhere on the trails and people are. Jumping it, airing it out, and I think for us, you know, the biggest thing about this uh, video that we're talking about right here is just get to know your machine. Mm-hmm. Don't get out there and air it out just to air it out, or just because you just because you like egging you on, like, yeah. hey man, you got to do it. You yeah. bought this brand new Honda Pioneer; it's got to get some air. I mean, <sighs> you know, at the end of the day, it's really kind of better to just be called a, a wussy than it is to you know be trying to collect your marbles and getting an ambulance ride you know what i'm saying i mean yeah. you got, sometimes you just gotta like be and like you know what i just spent twenty thirty thousand dollars on this thing i'm not gonna go out there and bust it up or bust myself up you know a lot of people you know you got responsibilities you got to pay for your machine very true i mean you might have aflac but i'm telling you what <laughs> that ain't gonna do, do you no good three years from now when you're still walking around and it rains and you're hurting you know what i mean <laughs> you're, you're you're you sound like rice krispies when the milk hits it you know <laughs> oh what I'm my saying? gosh i know a couple of people like yeah. that you know and another thing to keep in mind guys if you're gonna jump it and do dumb shit yeah you got to be ready to one, get your unit back. Because if you mm-hmm. break all the shit on your unit, you know, how are you going to get it back? Yep. You better have the stuff to at least put a Band-Aid on a bullet hole and, you know, be able to get it get it back to your trailer. Yep. And two, if you get hurt, not wearing a helmet, mm-hmm. i.e. not wearing a helmet or you or break anything. something or yeah. anything, you really get hurt and uh, you can't drive back or physically drive back. I'm going to tell you right now, a helicopter ride. Ooh, 10 to 15 grand. Life 10 flight. to 15 grand. I've heard some of them going up to 20. Um, so just... Keep that in mind, and not all insurances are going to cover uh, death moth. So. Yep, exactly. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that helps you out. We wanted to cover some things, some maybe some do's and don'ts. Uh, feel free to share your uh, experiences. Comment, By the way, guys, uh, let uh, us know. that We found these videos on the internet, so the, if this is you, hey, I mean, let us know. Yep. If this is you, say, yo, man, that's me. Yeah. What's up? It was you a know? cool video. It was cool enough that it made our video. Our, uh, our, podcast yeah. uh, youtube thing here yeah i mean hey you're famous so yeah. uh congratulations <laughs> uh hopefully you're taking it a little bit more easier next time because if you're in this video <laughs> things aren't going good yeah. for you <laughs> well guys thanks a lot we appreciate you hit the subscribe button the like the video uh notifications all that good stuff we appreciate you we appreciate y'all watching we'll see you next time see you